Thank you, Eric, for that. Now joining me in studio is counseling psychologist uh, Silas Kirinya and, of course, Mercy Wanjao, um, the Assistant Director of Communications Authority at the Regulatory and Governance Board. Thank you so much for both joining us. Um, allow me to begin with you, Silas. Mm. So we talked about the numbers, 130 deaths, mm. 50 challenges. This is a span of over 50 days. It's quite a long time for parents to not notice that there's something off with their child. Would you hold the parents responsible for this? Certainly, uh, parents are supposed really to know what is happening in the lives of their children. And uh, 50 days is such a long time for a parent really not to know what is happening in the lives of their children if really they are you know, there to mentor them, to parent them. Uh, therefore, part, partly, yes, parents are responsible because they need to know what is happening in the lives of their children. All right, and Mercy, is this a parenting issue or is this a regulatory issue? Um, thank you, Maya. Actually, it's both because um, children spend a lot of time with their parents. But on the other hand, we also have agencies who have been created, um, you know, within this country to take care of the safety and the security of that space. There are also other actors in that space because schools are one other critical player and children spend a lot of time there. So I would say it really has multiple actors who come in into that space to ensure that it is safe, that it is creative, and at the same time to ensure that the unintended consequences that come out of it are minimized or removed completely. But looking at the regulatory aspect of it, whose mandate is it to ensure that our children are safe online? Um, actually, the mandate for children protection cuts across very many agencies. And uh, in this country, the constitution recognizes the need to promote the safety and welfare, not just of the child, even the grown-up uh, person. But thereafter, then come very, very many agencies because the online space is a big space. It's an open space. And uh, our philosophical outlook is to promote um, freedom in a democratic space. So the Communications Authority of Kenya comes in in one uh, angle because of the communications issue and the confluence with technology. But there are many other agencies, the child welfare societies um, and many others. There are also other non-state actors who come in to protect um, and preserve uh, the, the protection for the child. So there are very many of them. There is no one who would say that um, they are accountable for that space in totality. Silas, and when you look at those different challenges, 50 challenges, some of them were really gruesome. We're talking about children who are literally hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. And what can put a child, I'm just trying to understand, what can put a child into this state where they actually will listen to instructions to hurt themselves mm -hmm. and go ahead and actually do it? Uh, the, the, actually, the main agenda for whoever designed uh, the blue whale is actually to target the young people who are going through um, emotional, maybe, instability. And uh, because of that, then they are the point that they are looking for recognition, for example. Let's say somebody is uh, born in a poor family, somebody has gone through uh, a traumatic experience, the parents are, for example, fighting uh, in the family, or parents are uh, using drugs, okay? Now, because of that, the children probably are not validated. And therefore, online is a free space where they can enjoy all the freedom, and uh, as they enjoy that freedom, they are also validated for that. Therefore, that could be actually the main driving force why they would allow themselves, uh, uh, maybe even to harm themselves. When you say validated, what mm -hmm. do you mean by this? I mean that, uh, uh, for example, let's say your family, your parents are fighting in the family. Uh, they have no time to listen to the child, so the child is all alone. They lose their identity. They don't know who they are. And therefore, online, when they perform, for example, the first task, and they are commended for that, and uh, they are told to, to, to do more and more, mm -hmm. and every time they are commended for it, then finally, they feel like, yes, this is the way to go. I have to keep on uh, doing more and more tasks as, uh, as I get recognition uh, from the master. So it's kind of like positive reinforcement? It, definitely, that's how it looks. That's how it looks, even though, ultimately, the, the outcome is endangering uh, their own lives. But I'm looking at it from the parents' perspective. Mm -hmm. As you said, 50 days is such a long sure. um, period of time. And mm -hmm. before you get to that point where a child actually commits suicide, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that there are certain signs, certain symptoms that mm -hmm. parents can look out for mm -hmm. in a child that would say, okay, I think there's something wrong here. Mm -hmm. What are some of those signs and symptoms that parents can look out for? Uh, 
Uh, from the one go, I think uh, the parents need to be aware of any maladaptive behavior. For example, uh, their children are withdrawing or they are withdrawn. For example, they come at the table, they take their food and take food to their, to their rooms and they are eating from their rooms. Or they are you, uh, spending more time in, in the room uh, more than they would uh, engage themselves into active activities who are maybe within the, the, the family or mm, house chores and all that. Uh, so they need to know those indicators. And then, for example, if the child is becoming more irritable than before, there are some other languages, of course, that the child may use, and you know this is an indicator that something is not right. For example, where a child comes and says, uh, in this life no one cares, life is useless, is worthless, that is a language of probably somebody who is uh, experiencing what we call existential issues. And therefore, they are at the point they are questioning their own existence. And in that case, then uh, as a parent, you need to know more what is happening in the life of your child. Uh, the other things, for example, if the child is becoming so aggressive in school, you need uh, to, to be aware, aware of that as well. Uh, for example, let's say somebody enjoyed something like, uh, that is, uh, let's say a student enjoyed uh, football or, or volleyball or whatever kind of game, and then all of a sudden they lose interest. So you really want to know as a parent, why are they losing interest in the things they enjoyed before? So probably they are spending more time in the game and uh, they don't have time uh, maybe to play with others. So these are the key things that the parents need to be aware of. All their children, for example, are waking late at night uh, several times. So, you, so as a parent, you would want to know. Or they are making noise at night and you don't know who they are talking to. Uh, as a parent, you need to be aware of these kind of behaviors and uh, make sure as a parent, of course, you build trust between you and your children so that they are, they, they are able to open and share with you what is happening in their lives. Mercy, your opinion, should it be the parents' responsibility to regulate what the children are watching online or should it be um, the regulator's job to ensure that it doesn't even get to the children in the first place? Mm. You know, the internet space is so big, it's so broad and it's in everybody's interest to ensure that it's a safe space. But even the most diligent parent would not possibly be able to follow their child everywhere and ensure that they do the right thing. So what government does and has uh, committed to do is to do a lot of sensitization and awareness. And this is one of the activities of the Communications Authority of Kenya to ensure that the child who is the primary user is well equipped and aware that everything on the internet is not always what it appears uh, to be. So that when they go in, they go in with a critical mind that they're able to question issues. Obviously, this kind of sensitization and awareness building is very successful when backed up by parental values and guidance. In the absence of values and guidance, then perhaps nothing else counts. So I think it is a very, very much a joint responsibility and a call for parents to step up because um, unfortunately with the movement of the ages and innovation in tech, many parents are what we now call analog parents, parenting digital natives. So when a parent is not aware or has no sense or insight of what happens in the digital space, already there is a gap because they parent in the real world but have no real familiarity with what's happening in the virtual world. And research and statistics have shown that children spend up to 60 or 70 percent of their free time online. So when as a parent um, you do not have the key awareness of what's happening on the online space. Are you actually parenting or what is going on? Away from the parents though, let's talk about schools because of course a majority of time spent um, in children in school and we're seeing that there's a lot of integration as well, online integration, digital learning in school. So it's difficult for children to ignore you know, being online. Uh, what role would you say the schools have to play in this and should it be incorporated in the curriculum um, to you know, teach children online safety? What are your opinions? I think that's a very good point you make because with the migration of learning to the online space, it now is very, very important that um, online knowledge and awareness becomes like the safety belt. You know, we fasten on when going on, on the road. So um, as a primary factor, I would anticipate that this is something the Ministry of Education will take up as they continue to roll out computers and automation in schools so that the online curriculum, when students are accessing it, accessing it in a safe environment. I would also expect that infrastructure that is set up in schools has appropriate filters that are put in to ensure as much as possible that children access safe content. But this is not foolproof. 
sometimes content that is not desirable will seep through those filters because remember those pushing games like the one that we have seen the blue whale do it in a very subtle manner in a very nuanced manner so a filter may not be um, comprehensive enough to track everything and pull it down. So it still goes back to the first um, principles, the fundamentals of parenting and the values that that child has and the relationship the child has with the parents and other uh, superiors, other responsible superiors around them to create the rapport to ask and question and seek a view. Silas, we have some parents that are watching this right now that are really shocked by the fact that online gaming can have this negative impact. In fact, some parents may think that, you know, you're in, you're in the house, it might be safer than going out there and engaging with strangers. But for parents that are watching this right now, what can they do to police their children and ensure that they are um, not engaging in such games? Uh, I think for parents, first of all is uh, uh, to build trust with their children. That's the beginning of everything. So that when the children find themselves in this kind of platform, they are able to open up and share with their parents. Then again, they need also to know uh, what are kind of, uh, for example, the engagements that they are giving to, to their children. If you give your, your child a, a, a computer, a laptop, and they are keeping them in their, in their rooms, uh, then you need to know what exactly are they, the, what are they watching. Although, you know, as, as she said, it's not that easy. But however, it's important to be aware that they can use those, uh, um, those gadgets uh, to access um, these kind of games. Uh, also, uh, as parents, I think it's important that they keep on uh, you know, having uh, more time with their children. Because if children are spending more time by themselves or with their friends, then ultimately they are going to acquire quite a lot from their friends and from what they are uh, gaining from online. And you as a parent is like you're very passive and you're not present uh, in their lives as they grow. Mercy, your final, your final remarks in terms of what the government should do in the regulatory space to ensure that our children are safe online. Actually, a lot is being done. On the policy side, um, the risks that come attached to technology have been acknowledged for quite some time. And uh, there is a bill that um, has received cabinet approval uh, called the Computer and Cybercrime Bill. This bill actually recognizes the possibility of bullying, stalking, or even being exposed to internet content that could lead to detrimental effects, exactly what the blue will effect is. And recognizing that children, especially vulnerable populations like children are so critical, the penalties are very high indeed. It provides for a penalty of 20 million shillings or 10 years in jail. And also recognizes that if you cannot get the individual developer, you can go for the supplier, the corporate, and provides for corporate um, responsibility and penalty in there. So I think uh, the one thing would be to ensure that this kind of legislation passes because it is for such a time that this kind of um, legislation needs to be in place and to ask that as ICTs and technology continue to permeate everyday life, that the issue of sensitization is put as a key agenda and the resources to back it up so that every user is able um, and knowledgeable, um, especially if we look at the statistics, for example, about 30% of Kenyans have broadband connection and 40 million Kenyans have mobile phones. If these mobile phones are the same gadgets that children have access to and are using to do this kind of games, then I think uh, it can't be overemphasized the need to create capacity for understanding and awareness about online safety. Thank you very much for both of you um, just sharing your views. You never know, you might have saved a life today. So I thank you yeah. for joining us this evening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you and uh, that was clinical, uh, sorry, con counseling psychologist uh, Silas Kirinya and uh, Mercy Wanjao, Assistant Director at Communications Authority, Regulatory and Governance, just speaking about the dangers of online gaming. I hope as parents you've taken something home with you this evening um, and do keep a close eye on your children. Now I'll hand it up back to Eric for more news.